Cool. Sonia Tetlo, thanks for having me here. It's great to see you. Hey, Ben, B-E-N Williams. It's great <laughs> to see you, too. Where, where are we right now? We're in my backyard um, here in East Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, yeah. With the mosquitoes. They're not too bad. <laughs> I only got a huge bug bite right here. It's big. <laughs> <laughs> Is that not That's perfect. <laughs> I love it so much. That's all I need. Let's do it. So, first question, pretty basic. What's the name of the record? It's called Now. What, any, any particular reason for naming it Now? Yeah, I think there are a few reasons. Um, the last song I wrote for it is a song called Now. And um, it seems sort of like the culmination of the past couple of years and trying to sort some things out and, um, and just be present in the moment. And then, and I really like how the track came out with the band. Um, and then the more I started thinking about the other songs and the lyrics and stuff like that, it seems to be sort of a theme. So I guess, I guess I've been um, working on being in the now uh, recently. So it seemed like a good title. Yeah, I mean the the record yeah. is like a it has a, what feels like a really new sound for you, mm -hmm. and it's pretty uncompromising and and how new and current you're trying to make things kind of feel was there a catalyst to making a record that kind of sounded different than anything that you were working on previously well yeah I wasn't I wasn't thinking that I wanted to be different than everything I've done in the past because I always see things as as an evolution and a continuum but I definitely wanted to do well I guess that's not true because I wanted some different sounds you yeah. know I wanted to um, as I said to you, I wanted to fuck things up, <laughs> you know? <laughs> when I was doing those demos and, you know, throwing on those weird sounds and everything to try to articulate it. And um, I think part of it was I'd gone recently over the past three years into more of an Americana sound and playing banjo with Roxy Watson um, and writing more structured songs and, and stuff. And then the past year or so, I'd been really kind of getting back to a place where I just wanted to write whatever came out and not think about it in terms of, you know, preconceived notions about what a song should sound like or not. And, and, um, and I mean, I'm a rock and roller at heart. And so, and these felt like rock songs to me and they're rhythm based and I wanted them to groove. And, you know, I really wanted just, I was feeling like, you know, in the past, everything I've done has been and when it's a band, it's been very guitar-based for the most part, and wanting some something different. And uh, you know, I'd also done a lot with the records in the past, producing and stuff. And it's like I wanted, I was tired. I'm tired of me, and I wanted <laughs> to work with some different folks and feel creative. And you know, I think getting older. And you know, my dad was real sick, and then he um, he died at the end of May. Uh, you know, sort of facing mortality and thinking about life and the past and reconciling that and and realizing that it's like life you only have so long it's like well I want to do this and I want to do this just because it's what I feel compelled to do as an artist um, and I want it to be you know how I envision it you know but I think it's even better than what I hoped for because um, it's like yeah I don't know how many more times I'll get to make records so um, you know, at the end of the day, I, as I told you, it's like I wanted to have fun doing it. I wanted it to feel creative, and I wanted to have a record that I'm going to enjoy listening to and, and dig and feel good about. And um, I just feel so grateful that I feel like, you know, all that came to be, you know. Thanks, Steve. <laughs> and all the guys. No, it's awesome. I mean, I, I think it's cool that you were... You know, you, you weren't, like, totally reinventing yourself, but it was something a little bit like that with, like, the records that I think you made previously and sort of how you went out and left field a little bit differently with this one. And usually mm -hmm. people don't do that as they make more records, <laughs> um, yeah. which I thought was really cool. You know, it's really inspirational that, that you're, you're sort of like, oh, I'm gonna flip the script, I'm gonna do this. And it's like, that's something a lot of artists could really stand to learn from. So I think that's really cool that you did that. Oh, thanks. But I, w I want you to tell me about like the, the process of writing some of these songs, because I think Nobody really writes songs this, in the same way or the same fashion, so it's always pretty interesting to me. How did you come up with these songs? Like, what was your writing process like? 
Well, I wrote all of them on acoustic guitar because, like I mentioned, they're they're real rhythm based. I wanted I wanted there to be a groove um, intentionally. Um, you know, I m made a change in my life, and I have uh, a job now, which is a little more straight laced than I'm what I'm used to, and so I had this sort of um, uh, adverse reaction to it a little bit and so in order for, to keep my sanity I needed to um, play guitar on my lunch break so I'd go sit in my car <laughs> <laughs> in the parking deck on my lunch break and with my travel guitar and just play because it, uh, it, it calmed me down. I was kind of wondering what I was doing. Um, so I wrote probably four or five of the songs in the back seat of my car in the parking deck at work. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Um, which that was new for me. I hadn't written in the car before, really. Um, yeah, I mean the way that the way that I write is I, I rarely sit down with the intention of writing a song. I'm usually playing, you know, or practicing or something, and I'll hit a um, a chord, I mean, a chord change or a rhythm or something that just all of a sudden it's like it's there and it's like oh what's that, you know, and then. Um, I don't know, it just usually flows. The words and the music come at the same time for me. Um, the only song that I had the line before I knew anything was Don't Hold Me To It because that came from a specific experience um, in court where this lawyer said all this stuff, you know, blah, 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 blah about the law and then said, um, but don't hold me to it. And I'd never been in court before, but I was like, <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to say that. <laughs> How do you give your case? And I thought, I just immediately could hear it as this like sort of Mardi Gras Indian chant of like, don't, do it. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's cool. And inspiration so, like hits you like that. Oh yeah. And you're just like, oh, like I hear the whole thing in my head. Like yeah. I get it. Yeah. That's really funny. Yeah, I like the lyrics to that song in particular, especially like with everything that's going on nowadays with people not knowing like what's real or, or what mm -hmm. isn't. Like the lyrics to that song are hilarious. Like yeah. It was you know it was funny because it was supposed. To, it was just I was just having fun with it because I thought that that whole experience was so absurd and surreal. But it turned out to be kind of prescient because now we're in this post-truth <laughs> world, and I'm like, oh, it's like the perfect song now. You definitely made a nice <laughs> post-truth record with some of the sounds that you you got going on. Yeah, it's pretty out there.